Okay, sorry about those technical details or, or difficulties there. Um, okay, so that's in black and white. Um, yeah, cool. Okay, so hi everyone. Um, my name is John Brett, as Ben mentioned. Um, those are my details at Twitter or Twitter and GitHub. If anyone wants to get in touch with me after this or is curious about anything I talk about, um, so uh, about me, I'm a lead engineer at a company called D4H Technologies. Um, and we've recently adopted Happy. Um, what I wanted to talk today was about how that adoption has gone and how we actually came to use it and some of the design decisions we made around it. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty sure no one, no one has ever heard of D4H Technologies. We're a small company uh, based out of Dublin. Um, so just a real quick intro on what we do, just to give sort of uh, context. Um, so basically, okay, the resolution isn't great there, but those are our customers. Uh, we work in the emergency services and response team industry. So um, what we do is provide software to help these guys do their jobs, which is save lives. And they range from anywhere from charity search and rescue teams to public fire service or city hazmat teams and uh, all the way up to private oil and gas and on-site pharmaceuticals. Um, so we give teams software tools to help them do their jobs to the best of their ability. So when it comes to tracking equipment, so inspections, repairs, managing inventories, their personnel who's qualified, who's um, trained, who's on call, and we give them like structured incident reporting, so better analytics, and um, integrate with like lost data, uh, lost person databases around the world. And um, so with the goal of like giving them the right data for when things go wrong, and um, we do that all from here. So that, that's actually a lighthouse on the coast of Dublin. Um, it's taken from an Irish Coast Guard helicopter, so it's a, it's a pretty cool place to work on Happy. Yeah, um, so what we're going to talk today was basically about how we came to use Happy in our stack, and some of the design choices we made, and um, how our first venture with Node went all together, and the part Happy played in that. Um, so why Happy? So to actually to answer that, I have to start with why Node. Um, up until about six months ago, we were actually a fully PHP company. Um, so typical LAMP stack code base, a large monolithic server-side rendering, and then a custom framework on top. Um, but yeah, we wanted to build a public API, so for mobile apps and customer integrations and you know, improve development for ourselves. Um, so trying to move forward with the code base and trying to build that API, um, it was clear it was going to slow us down in the long run in terms of like maintainability and things. Um, so, so we looked elsewhere to see what other PHP frameworks like improve the situation moving forward. Um, and, th and then we also investigated other languages and obviously landed on Node, it's like seeing all the success stories of like Walmart and PayPal and their adoption stories. Um, so, so we built a prototype to compare with like the PHP API prototype we had. Uh, we did originally in Express actually, but um, uh, and even without like the PHP code we used for problems we'd solved already. Um, we were able to replicate the PHP API concept pretty quickly and in much less Node code, but I think that's what everyone finds that with NPM and the Node ecosystem, you're able to do things pretty quick. Um, so obviously Node was the way forward and we wanted to move forward with that. So um, the prototype was prototypey at best. Uh, so there's a lot learned, but there's a huge amount wrong with it uh, that was going to cost us moving forward. Um, so the next step was to look at our choice of frameworks and see what would scale for us. I think Express is a great framework, but some of the design aspects we weren't convinced would suit like a larger scale API and project, um, unless we built extra infrastructure and we didn't have the resources or experience to do that. Um, some of the design issues with Express we ran into was like the router and like the flexibility it offers is great, but um, like not being able to guarantee your handler call order and stuff like that. And we've seen some companies get burned by that recently. And um, it, it always felt like we were working against it to try to keep things modular. Um, so we spent some time evaluating other options and uh, looked at loads of great frameworks in Node. And I could spend a talk like talking about how they compare with Happy, but you just have to trust me when I say we looked extensively and found that Happy was the one that met our needs the best. Um, so like Happy is a lot of bragging rights, but I wanted to talk about what influenced our decision to choose it. And uh, first of all, the routing was like deterministic, and uh, which is brilliant, like for larger scale projects. I think it's kind of essential because um, you don't always get to know the project as a whole. Um, the enterprise grades so, like 100% test coverage and strict SEMVR adherence. Like w we can't afford to make mistakes in the industry we're in, so the, the robustness was a like a first priority for us. Um, the plugin API is probably my favorite feature in Happy. Um, 
it, it provided the infrastructure that I felt was missing in other frameworks and trying to keep a code base clean and scale well. And it gives all your code context, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, I have a few examples. And, um, it lets you focus on building business value instead of rebuilding the same uh, infrastructure every time. Um, the, the ecosystem is great, all the plugins are provided by the happy team and other people, but I, I won't go into that. I think some of the other speakers are going to cover some of those. And um, I definitely wanted to mention the community. Um, it's really inclusive and encouraging to beginners. Um, my first Node module was a happy module, and this is my first conference talk. It's, you can probably tell from nerves. <laughs> but, um, and that's the result like, like guys like Ben and the mentoring um, uh, systems got in there. Um, so some of the design choices we made around happy. Um, they're heavily influenced by like NPM and their like facet service style and the happy CLI like and how we structured uh, building this application. Um, so like, after a few different attempts and like trying to structure things so that they would scale quite well because we expected this API to grow pretty big, our platform's pretty big, and the range of features we offer. Um, so so one of the problems or one of the pep hates I have about like a lot of Node uh, applications is this like 500 line index file. We have like huge amounts of code with no context, and it's hard to uh, grasp at a first attempt. Uh, so we wanted to keep that clean from start. Um, so we pushed anything that wasn't config or like plugin registration into a plugin. Um, so it gives you a ni nice, neat starting place, and then everything inside a plugin gives it context. Um, then the plugins were either divided into a service or a feature. So like a service plugin would be like catering for some sort of service like database access or you know authentication or uh, stuff like that. And then the feature was the business logic that we'd be offering uh, customers, like your, your uh, memberships or uh, equipment management or something like that. And th they would contain the model functionality as well as the routing logic. And then they would expose their own functionality for another plugin to consume. I'll, I'll explain that in a minute with code. And, um, and then they could consume another if needed. And then everything else we said we pushed into node modules. And I thought, this would be excellent. We'll have loads of node modules to my name and the D4H name and all. But there was surprisingly few. And I think that says a lot about the node ecosystem and, and the happy ecosystem as well. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like. Um, so this is a new happy8 syntax. Um, uh, the, that's pretty straightforward. You require a happy module, create your server, take in some config. Um, you add a connection, this is new to Happy 8, so it's basically a listener. And we, we just, uh, trying to see, is that clear? Yeah. And um, you pass in a port, I, I won't go into that. I think Aaron's going to talk about some of the Happy 8 features later. And then we just add in our plugin registration. So you can see pretty clearly, like, all your code is context now. You can understand what it does, and not this big giant uh, index file to try to digest. Um, I don't know what you like, I'm not used to production code looking that clean. Um, so I'd show you what like a sample feature plugin would look like. Um, so this would be how we generally lay out like our member plugin. Um, so that's just the normal plugin registration, three parameters, uh, plugins like a server alias, so anything you can do with server, you can do in a plugin, but some sandbox features which are pretty cool. The options would be passed in when you're registering and next just returns the control flow back to the server. Um, so this is an example of consuming one of the plugins, so we're consuming some database access here. Nice clean API to do it and it'll fail the compile time if there's any issues so you're not testing things at runtime. Um, then we add in our model functionality that might come from an ORM or something you've rolled yourself. And we pass in the uh, database here, so it made testing easier when we were testing our uh, model logic. Um, this is how we expose the functionality, so another uh, plugin could consume it, so pretty straightforward again. And there's a root, so sorry, that's a lot of code at once, but uh, um, so th that's a standard root definition there. And like, I think it's pretty self-documenting. Um, uh, I, I won't go into validation. I think someone's going to talk about Joy specifically later, but um, you can see here like the, the query params are pretty like self-documenting. Um, pretty handler gets called next for any you know, checks we might want to do. But I think the handler needs to be like, highlighted for how simple it is to read and what it does. Uh, we use promises, um, I don't know, they work for us, <laughs> for our handling. I think there's always a debate around them. Um, Calibrate was one of the modules we wrote ourselves to like, uh, give sort of uniform JSON outputs. Uh, it worked pretty cool because um, it, if, if there was a boom error, it would just return that it is, but if not, it would wrap it. Um, so we'd always have a similar output, and then it would pass your to like, New Relic or monitoring tool. So 
if there was ever a problem, that route would just you know return 500s, but the server wouldn't crash. And that's one of the cool things about Happy. Um, the descriptions are straightforward. Um, so just one more feature to show. Then, like on top of that, we're back to server example, and we have one extra plugin. Um, so this is Happy Swagger. So it's kind of like Lout would be. So self-documenting. Um, but but it actually generates Swagger documentation, which is pretty interactive. And for anyone not familiar with Swagger, it, it generates documentation that looks like this. Um, so it generates a JSON specification to the API and enables interactive documentation generation on the page and then a uh, sandbox there for anyone to test. And this was huge for our customers and uh, like when trying to build integrations with us. And it even goes one step further. You can actually have your client gener or your client SDKs generated from this in like Java or PHP or JavaScript. Um, so it's pretty cool that with one root definition, you've got your documentation and client SDKs generated at compile time with no build step. So that was huge for us moving forward. So, um, so results, um, we have an API in production. Um, we started about in the summer. We have an API in production supporting our first mobile app also in production. Um, some cool parts of it, you know, really good error handling, input validations, reusable and reliable. Um, no manual docs maintain or client APIs. Codes modular, scales quite well. Um, and uh, it's changed how we uh, approach development now. So new, new features are built to API first. And um, we've actually seen customers now start building their own API or their own apps over it, which is pretty cool to see. Um, so yeah, things to take away. Uh, node adoption can work even with small teams and small resources. I'd prototype a small use case first. I wouldn't just throw away our code base that we have um, and try to replace with one. And when you do, definitely use Happy. It, it worked great for us, and I don't think we would have moved forward um, with any other framework at the same pace. Um, and certainly, if anyone's using Happy, definitely talk to me. I'm curious to see how you build things with it or if you have different uh, design approaches. Um, so, on that note, I'll finish with another picture of our lighthouse. Um, thanks very much for the Happy team for like, inviting me over here to speak on this, and uh, thanks everyone for listening.